At BGE, we are in the delivery of electricity and gas to our customers. However, as important as that is, also the environment is very important to BGE. We work with all regulators, we work with all sources to make sure that we bring electricity and gas to our customers in a safe, reliable way while being kind to the environment. As of now, BGE has approximately 50 rare, threatened, endangered species growing on our right of ways. A few years ago, Dr. Tangren came to us and she had found some lupins growing in Anne Arundel County on one of our right of ways. So the BGE foresters, they came out immediately and we looked at it and uh, that same day we had already modified the management plan for the site. And so uh, the botanical garden has been monitoring the lupins each year since then and each year they get healthier and healthier. The lupin is a perennial wildflower. The common name of our lupin is the sundial lupin, Lupinus perennis. And it's a member of the uh, pea family, the pea or the bean family. And the entire, the entire family of peas and beans, only the lupins have this really unique leaf with the, the whorl of leaflets that looks like a sundial or a clock. Lupins are on Maryland's rare, threatened, and endangered species list because there are so few populations left in the state and uh, the reason there are so few populations are things like development. The deer actually eat the flowers. They come along and they just, they grab the flower head like this and eat the whole thing. They don't eat the plants. The, the plant, until it goes to flower, the deer don't touch it. And when they eat that entire flowering stem, it completely eliminates the reproductive capacity for that. What makes right of ways really unique is the fact that we suppress vegetation. And I say that in a sense that we stop the natural succession and we end up with our grass and meadow fields like behind myself. Uh, we do that with various means, i.e. the mowing or herbicide or mechanical means. We provide a habitat that's very unique. Uh, by using integrated vegetation management, the combination of mowing, spraying, and other means, we keep the woody brush off, provide a corridor for reliable electricity, and a safe place for everybody to be out here. So if it weren't for the power lines, this would be a forest, and lupins and, and most of the other plants that are here can't grow in that really dense shade. So they, they coexist quite well. They're here because the power lines are here. Uh, so lupins come up in mid to late April when the soil starts to warm up and they grow very rapidly. The, uh, by, by the end of April and early May they begin to form their flower buds and the flowering period, the whole thing from beginning to end occurs in two weeks. And depending on how well they're pollinated and how healthy and diverse the community is, each pod can have up to six seeds. And that green pod, as it ripens, starts to turn brown. And once it gets to be all brown, sometime right about the end of June, they literally crack open. And those peas are fantastic food for wild birds. Um, game birds, turkeys, uh, bob whites, um, just uh, again really rich in the nitrogen and the, like for us when we eat peas, peas and beans, uh, very nutritious for wildlife. So today I've been counting the flowers on the lupins and randomly pick 10 different flowering stems and just count the number of blossoms and buds on each stem and have a really close look at the stem and look at it uh, in terms of its health, if it looks like it has any insect damage or if maybe the deer have damaged it. It really gives us an idea of how healthy the lupin population is and what its reproductive capacity looks like. At bg &E, sometimes it's hard to convince customers we're doing the right thing, whether we're spraying herbicides, mowing right of or doing our tree work. However, Generally, once we have an opportunity to talk to them, they accept what we're doing and a lot of times we win them over 
and in fact have received a lot of awards for doing what we do on our right-of-ways. Geologically and in terms of the soil here, this is an extremely shallow soil. The whole soil profile is about that thick and under that is just hard rock. And this plant, this lupin, is really uniquely adapted to compete in that environment. It can make its own nitrogen. Uh, it makes ni nitrogen fertilizer basically out of air and adds it to the soil and supports all of the other plants and, and a lot of the um, butterflies and things that will grow here. And it sends its ro um, roots right down into the rocks, cracks in the rocks for water. So it's, it's a very unique relationship between the plant and the soil and the geology that you don't find in, in other places or even in this part of Maryland in other positions on the, uh, the slope. What I can see here today is that since we started monitoring in 2009, the health of this population is just skyrocketing. The, it's going to be the best year ever in terms of seed set for this lupin site. We're hoping we can expand the lupin population and continue to follow directions and mow when we're supposed to mow and use herbicides when we're supposed to, to use the herbicides back there and it should continue to enhance the lupin population. I think this year we're going to get a really beautiful seed harvest from these lupins and uh, if it's all right with bg and &E, what we'll do is we'll actually take those seeds and put them in the National Seed Bank and they will be kept in deep freeze and people 200 years from now will be able to get those seeds out if they needed to reestablish a lupin population somewhere um, or if they needed them for medical research or it, it's just, it's an amazing contribution to be able to make.